you're only using 10% of what the Maffetone method offers. I'm going to talk to you about why and how to fix it so you're able to run faster for longer, go those longer distances, be injury free, lose the weight, get sleep better and overall be able to run longer at the same heart rate and improve your running. When you start using the Maffetone method, most people start with the formula. 180 minus your age and then minus or add on a couple of beats depending on if you've been running for a while and you've been injury free or you've got weight to lose, stuff like that, right? But what a lot of people don't really understand or they fail to understand or they're really new to it and they're not too sure on how to navigate this whole method basically guys it's running slow <laughs> it's base building right this is important the real juicy bit comes into play when you want to measure your results to see if you're improving now one of the things that dr phil maffetone talks about is there comes a point in your training where your birthday arrives and you're like oh my god you got to be kidding me i have to like reduce my heart rate i have to go slower now you know, I've lost another beat, another year has gone by, or five years have gone by and I have to keep reducing every year. Guys, that's a myth. You do not need to do that. So don't, right? Dr. Phil Maffetone talks about it. Nowhere does it say that every year you have to reduce your heart rate by one beat. In the big book of endurance training and racing, what I talk about there is that we keep that 180 minus the age formula, you're feeling good and you're getting faster at that heart rate. Then about every three to five years, you might have to reduce that MAF heart rate by a beat or two, depending on your condition. If you've been doing well for those three to five years, then you wouldn't reduce it as much. But if you are not doing well, then the aging factor is maybe catching up, so you might have to reduce it more. The bottom line is that when you do make an adjustment, you're going to follow your MAF test to see if indeed you've reduced it and allowed your body to get faster at that same heart rate. The idea of reducing your heart rate every year is absolutely not true. The next big point is there is speed work involved. Yes, you can base build for a long period of time to be able to run faster or longer at the same heart rate. You want to build your aerobic base. You want to be able to run that marathon. Uh, you want to be able to run an ultra marathon. You just want to be able to do the things you want to do, but maybe you want to run them faster. Maybe you're not happy running slow all the time. Well, guess what? The Maftone method is not all about running slow. If you reach a point in your training where you're running and you're like, hey, you know what? I think it's time to switch it up. I'm starting to plateau. I'm starting to get bored. I just want to do something different. Well, guess what? You can. You can start adding in speed work, right? You can start to do 80% base building and then add in 20% speed. And depending on what phase you are in your training, that may look different for everybody, right? You may be at like a really early phase and say, hey, you know what, I'm just going to throw in maybe a tempo run. Maybe I'm just going to do a threshold run, right? Maybe one day a week or maybe you add in two days a week, right? You can do that. Or maybe you're at a point where you're well advanced and you're at like phase two and you're like, yeah, you know what, I'm doing a tempo run and I'm also going to start doing some hill repeats or maybe I'm going to go out on the track and start doing some 400s or 800 meter repeats. That could be where you're at. The Maffetone method allows that. It's flexible. The third point that a lot of people kind of forget about or they really don't understand is this is a lifestyle. This is a type of running where you're building that aerobic base, right? You're running slow so that way you're able to run longer, faster, at the same heart rate over time. And it's important to kind of stick to a routine and be consistent at it. Now, the thing that I really like about this method is you can validate what your training has done for you. So going out and doing a math test is a great way to do that. So what I would suggest is you find a place where you run each month. Man, you can hear the dog. He's barking real loud. <laughs> Ready to come through the window. Um, 
what you can do is find a track or find a flat piece of ground as long as you can cover a certain distance, okay? You ideally you want to run 5k, maybe do it for 3 miles or you do it for 6 miles, right? Or 10k, whatever whatever method, whichever metric number you use, imperial or metric. Now, the thing is is you want to make sure when you're doing this that it's flat. There's no one going to be bothering you. And you want to be able to run this particular place every month. So if you are in a place where there's a lot of snow, like where I am, um, some parts of the year, then running on a track may not work for you because look, I don't have an indoor track. <laughs> I got to run at the, the high school track. Now that's not going to work in these months because they don't plow it. So I have to find the a, a, a piece of road, a piece of pavement, some place where I can go and be able to run and measure what I'm doing. Now, I would say, look, you could track on this on every single run you do, but God, it, it causes more stress than anything else because you're always comparing yourself from day to day and you can't do that day to day. It's awful. It is, it's not a good place to be psychologically always in your head saying, am I getting better today? Am I getting better today? Because some days are going to be worse than others. So don't get caught up in that whole process of having to track it every single day. You want to also factor in weather because the weather is going to change from time to time. So you really, you can't control it unless you're running inside. So if you're on a treadmill, you can do a math test on a treadmill, sure. Right? You can do that every month because you can control all those variables. But if you're an outside runner like me, then you have to contend with the weather. And sometimes that can be tricky and dicey and it's hard to understand what the numbers say when they come back and you're like, whoa, okay, I'm actually slower this month, but you may be running uh, in like sand or I should say snow, right? It's like running in sand, right? That's really hard to run in. Like today I was out for my run and I, I noticed I was like, you know, a good 15 to 20 seconds a kilometer slower than my other run. But that's because I was like trying to run in this stuff and it's, it's really, really hard. Yep, dog's going crazy again. I'm gonna give you a bonus tip on this, right? Cause I think it's important while you're doing this base training. And now that we've covered the three, right? Being able to use the formula correctly, being able to, knowing that you can keep that number, knowing that you can keep your math number for a number of years. You may not have to get rid of it. You can keep it as long as you're improving, right? And you can make sure that that's happening based on what your math test tells you. I think that is probably the most overlooked thing other than speed work in the math tone method. Another factor you need to understand, specifically, if you are in Texas, maybe California, maybe New York, Canada where it's cold, or you could be over in Europe. Here's the thing. It's really important that you understand that you are going to experience what we call cardiac drift. And for those of you that know, you know. For those of you who don't know, basically as you run, you're going to get slower and slower and slower. Okay. At that same heart rate. And eventually it'll reach a point where you can't run anymore. You're going to be forced to walk if you want to keep that heart rate. Now, one of the ways that you can deal with this is to make sure you're staying hydrated. Because one of the things that I have found is the, if you're not hydrating, as you're, if you're not hydrating as you're running, what's going to happen to you is over time, your blood is going to get thicker and thicker, and it's going to be harder and harder to pump throughout your body because your, your blood is made up of like, I think 97% water. It's crazy. Actually, I'm no, again, I'm no doctor, but I think it's something like that. So you want to make sure that you're staying hydrated. Now, fatigue is going to set in. Right? So regardless of how much you hydrate, you will continue to get slower in time. So staying hydrated, being able to run 
longer and train your body to go further comes with consistency, right? So don't discount it. These things make a difference. Now, if you are anything like me, you want to be able to get faster using the same low heart rate. But over time, you may get bored. You may be doing these runs every single day. And after a while, you're kind of like, you know, I'm kind of bored of this. I kind of want to change it up. I don't want to be running the same route all the time. I want to maybe take it out onto the trail or maybe, you know, you want to hit, you know, some crushed gravel or something like that, right? Just know that, yeah, you can do that. Like that's no problem, right? If you, and again, if you want to use the Malphitone method to continue training like that, you can do that as well. You just may find yourself walking a lot more if you're on the trails because the hills are a lot higher. Or if you're running on crushed gravel, like a groomed kind of trail, then yeah, it, it may be a little bit harder than running on the road or, or a sidewalk or something like that. But you're going to have to figure that out for yourself, right? Depending on who you are, where you're running in the world, all that kind of jazz, right? But yeah, you can change it up. Like don't, don't get so bored that you kind of like, okay, I'm done with this. You know, you can do it. It's all good. And the other thing is, is you don't have to continue to always use this method. You can change it up. And like I said, add some speed. And I think that's important to know that you can be flexible because we're training for marathons. We're training for half marathons. And when you're training for these races, I think the important thing that you need to look after is your, your mental well-being, right? Because if you get to a point where you're running way too much and you're doing way too much base training and you've reached a point where you're like, I think I'm overtraining. Guess what? You may be overtraining. <laughs> like it's something to really think about because I found myself in that boat uh, in, in early 2020 where I was, I was running so many miles. And because of that, I was like, yeah, it's, it's time to kind of maybe chill it back a little bit. I don't need to be running 14 hours a day, uh, 14 hours a week. <laughs> you can overtrain. If you want to add more of the Maffetone method philosophy into the training, you can do that. And some other aspects of it that you could continue to explore is the food that you eat, the amount of caffeine that you're having, the weather that you run in, the amount of stress that you're under, the lack of sleep that you're getting, you see what I mean? Like there's a lot of things that add to your heart rate training other than just a formula. It's a lifestyle and I want you to absorb all of it. I'll make more videos on this and I have a lot more on my channel. And I think this video right here will actually talk a little bit more about what those options are for you. So you may want to take advantage and dive into that. Like I always say, get out and run. I can't really, yeah, just not going to work this time, guys. Get out and run.